implement sustainable reforms in the power sector came to fore in 2001, giving birth to the National Electric Power Policy in the same year. Now, this led to the Electric Power Sector Reform Act in 2005 and the unbundling of the power holding company of Nigeria and eventually the privatization of electricity generation and distribution subsectors in 2013. Six years later, the expectations of the Nigerian people to have improved, uh, if it, to have efficient and reliable electricity supply has not been met. And as a result, the initial excitement was soon replaced, first with distrust and thereafter with sheer derision of the entire power program for its seeming lack of progress, which even the Minister of Power made clear on Wednesday, stating that the discos are a major hindrance to the success of the electricity sector and must sit up or give way. That's, That's right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, joining us today to speak on the sector's post-privatization performance to date and other pertinent issues in the industry is Kunle Kola Ulubi, your president, Nigeria Consumer Protection Network and former member, National Technical Investigative Panel on Power Systems Collapses. Uh, good to have you on the show uh, this time. Okay, let's begin good with morning. the whole, it's yes, it's, you, it's good to have you, the, the whole uh, process of privatization, which many have said needs to be reviewed again. Uh, and of course, uh, the Senate, the Eighth Senate, actually uh, did raise uh, the point of reviewing the privatization uh, process. But so far, since 2013, uh, what's your view on how the past sector has performed? Thank you very much. Um, without bothering you with the rhetorics of uh, privatization, we are all aware and the media space has been awash of what really transpired in what, in quote, is, has been described as a privatization. First of all, it is very important to note that pre-privatization, uh, the aggregate of technical uh, commercial and collection losses was about 50% uh, in the sector. And uh, what this means is that uh, Nigerians were worried, the government was worried, and we felt that by privatizing, there will be a paradigm shift, which will bring in what we call the foreign direct investment. But what we have now is what in local parlance can be, uh, could be described as one chance. One chance in the sense that uh, those who were entrusted with public trust selected a few Nigerians that were expected to be an embodiment of uh, public trust, allow their individual interests, pecuniary interests, to override what we call the national interest. And now we are at a crossroad. Mm -hmm. The privatization process uh, was not transparent enough. It was devoid of property and accountability. And to us, uh, in every, with every sense of modesty, you can, it could be best described as a fraudulent uh, contract. And in public interest, uh, Nigerians have been twisted or blackmailed into entering agreement with some other clauses and what have you by people who are supposed to go there working, being paid on public funds, who are supposed to go there and be a custodian of public interest. So what we are saying is that, yes, of course, there are people uh, who ordinarily bid for this privatization. That's what we call the technical way with that and the financial way with that. Those who don't, like, who don't have it, we've seen what happened across board, were given. But that is not what we are trying to talk about now. Mm -hmm. we've, been, we've been so uh, um, twisted that reviewing it and sending this uh, lot out, we send a wrong signal. There's, an, there's a Yoruba adage that says that, or, or more, any toward, any boy, equal. What it means is that those are supposed to be Nigerians, our children, have, put, have immersed us in, in, you know, in a vicious circle that could lead to litigation. So we are not asking these investors to go. But the spirit and letters of the privatization, going by the status book of, uh, uh, you know, Bury of Public Enterprises, is that the equity stakeholder is going to be 40 percent for the so-called investors, 40% mm. for government, and 40% for public. That's Nigerians. But somewhere along the line, the Buri, I mean, the National Council on Privatization, alter these uh, terms 
and made it 60 percent to those we call the discourse and 40 percent to government but having said that we have discovered that the discourse borrowed money from nigerian banks the money did not come from outside they borrowed mm -hmm. money from nigerian banks for acquisition of licenses now before then electricity consumers of different classes whether public sector whether industrial r1 r2 were owing nepa pacn about three to five trillion u.s dollars collectively the total money paid by the discourse is about 800 million dollars now the agreement was that they would collect this money on behalf because they said they said they don't want the asset i mean they don't want the liability they don't want to pay for the personnel so we now said the money that was being owed since it's the discourse that is at the downstream they should collect get some percentage and remit to an agency of government that was set up described as nigeria electricity liability management company a successor company of uh, nepa pcn in court they collected this money somebody brought in 800 million collected this 3.3 to 5 billion US dollars and held it to themselves for a very long time before market operators started enforcing, you know, uh, radically uh, settlements. Some were collecting money, some were making 8, 8 billion naira a month, 10 billion naira a month, and they were not remitting. So it was penny wise, pound foolish. Mm. So having said that, what we are looking at is that. Uh, mid-term review of the privatization exercise, where we can bring come, all come with our strong reasons, and this is not working. They are not investing. Electricity consumers' investment pre-privatization, buying of transformer, buying of line materials, is huge. It's about 10 times whatever they are calling their investment. Now, Kone, you mentioned a few figures there that I'd like to pick back up on. You mentioned uh, uh, some extraordinary figures, if we're being honest with you. But additionally, despite privatization, the federal government has actually spent an additional 1.7 trillion naira. Mm -hmm. are you, should I repeat the question? Please, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting you. you are, it's like you are speaking in uh, Queen's uh, English. Can you come down? To, uh, <laughs> All right. So, Kunle, I was yes, saying yes, that you time. had mentioned a few yeah. extraordinary figures there, but I'd like to focus on one in particular. Now, despite privatization, the federal government has actually spent an additional 1.7 trillion naira on electricity. Why is that the case? That, that's what I'm trying to say, that you can't build uh, something or nothing. It's, it's an, uh, to us, just uh, yesterday night before I came on this program, I had interaction with the president of the NLC, I believe he's joining us, the Joe Ajero, and other stakeholders. Nigerians are concerned about what is happening. The continued injection of funds is based on interest of fifth columnists. Even the so-called Siemens deal, is based on fifth <clears throat> columnists. The president comes from a background of military. When it comes to warfare, that is where he has demonstrated expertise. That is why he has different people who are in charge of different areas who are expected in the overall interest of the nation to guide him. Most of this money, most of these claims are unverifiable claims. The more generation, the available capacity I mean, stock capacity of generation is 13,500. Mm. Available to peak is 7,500. And if, some, if we are injecting funds, we shall continue to encourage collection inefficiencies and revenue inefficiencies and efficiency in itself. So people are benefiting from what I call fifth columnists. They package all these things like the, the, the scandalous uh, Siemens, uh, uh, so much talk about Siemens uh, package for Nigeria. Siemens is having a package, they are mm -hmm. not discussing with the discourse, they are not discussing with the Jenkos. Can you shave my head in my absence? Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Then you want to generate political mega wars. Mr. Olivier, I'm movement. really happy you mentioned the Siemens so deal. We need that's to, we need to write, so we need to write the this, this, by this the government as. That's yeah. definitely, this Siemens deal has definitely been marketed by the government as a, as a viable solution to this problem. Do you agree? Do you think that uh, a German telecommunications and an electronics no, company no, no, can no, do no. this I'm, work? I'm, I'm, Why not? I'm, 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 I'm speaking as a patriotic Nigerian. I, I interact with those in the past and the present ministers of government. 
and the promoters of this government, and we've said it without fear of contradiction that to us, money is not the issue. We must leave a country for our children. A lot of people are shipping their children out to go to be Canadians, to be British citizens, American citizens. We must have a country. And this Siemens agreement is a disconnect. It's just an equipment supply package. Uh, you, they, you, you know, before privatization, there was this arrangement, emergency power uh, scheme. We have in Abuja where there was some artificial turbines at uh, Katampe, at Bega, and Apple, where they would buy gas before Makoju knocked them off. And Nigeria was paying dearly for it. What we are saying is that you cannot leave the cancer that you need to ostracize and be dressing the wound. There are challenges of fiscal indiscipline, there are challenges of lack of governance, there are challenges of equity, there are challenges of weakness of regulation. The challenges of reg regulatory subterfuge and some assault. Look at the meter asset provider policy. There are willingness of co consumers to pay in Ota, to pay in Lagos, to pay in Kaduna, to pay in Enugu. Except Abuja, I'm saying without apology, that have a system for since May, people have their money, it encourages corruption. If you recall that it was a duty agreement of the DISCO to close the metering gap, to mm -hmm. invest in the technical component of the grid, to improve the network. They're not doing that. And those who are supposed to regulate them or be there on our behalf, who have entrusted, have uh, taken this lame duck approach. So we need to speak to Mr. President and thank God that we have more than enough sources and people who are more than 50 years close to Mr. President that we are reaching out to. This is not good for us. And so, mm. because we don't want to send these investors back in, we must look for a way out to avoid litigation. Now, what we are saying is that federal government should pull out its equity out of the power sector because it's encouraging corruption so that we can pick more load. The only solution, a lot of our graduates, young men and women, are doing on the streets on printable things because there are nowhere to engage them and to employ them. And the mm. only solution, I feel like crying. The only solution to, to this problem is to make sure that we fix the power sector to bring back what we call re-industrialization. Go to okay. Kaduna where I've um, lived. All the textile companies have been taken over by reptiles. All right, uh, test they've been taken over. Mr. So Lubio, let's, let's put you on hold. Uh, hold that thought as we take a very short break. And when we come back, uh, we'll continue this uh, discussion. Very, very passionate one when it comes to power. Stay with us. All right, you're welcome back. We've been speaking with uh, Kule Kola Olubi, your president of Nigeria Consumer Protection Network, on the power uh, challenges. Now, um, 2018, President uh, Mohamed Buhari did uh, strike that deal with the German uh, government and Siemens. We have mentioned that. And Joe Kaiser uh, says that, look, Siemens is the best company to deal with the power problem that Nigeria continues to face, uh, since uh, they can meet all the three, you know, value chain, whether it is transmission, generation, or distribution. Uh, but if you were in a position to advise the president, what would you be advising him on now? Because Siemens is a totally, fully uh, foreign company. Uh, do you have any concerns about that? Thank you very much. You see, the major problem we have in Nigeria is that we allow uh, sentiment, ethnic, religion, primordial, regional sentiment to override our sense of, of, sense of agency for a national change. And what we've always canvassed for, advocated for, is that there are key, there are key sectors of the economy that when you are making appointment, we need to go for the best. And Nigeria, is not a want or short of the best. But what has continued to alarm us, myself as a young generation of Nigerian, is that we, are, we, don't, we don't used to put the round peg in the round hole or square peg in the square, whatever. We just allow other consideration to, to drive. So if I'm to advise Mr. President on the cement, before now, cement was blacklisted by FEC. Federal Executive Council, because of some issues that got to do with supply, equipment and telecoms, uh, equipment in Nigeria, and some ministers were even inducted. I remember uh, somebody of uh, uh, blessed memory, 
Chief CEO Adibayo, some officials of Schema were set, you know, went to jail in Germany because of that. And we behave as if we don't have institutional memory. The enactment of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Act is solely to make sure that whatever Nigeria is going to get or Nigeria is going to be committed to doing, we get the best <coughs> benchmark of global competitiveness. There is General Electric. There's ABB, there's Siemens, there's our, all the electrical and so, so many others. Electrical equipment suppliers. Siemens should not play smart on us. I haven't done that before. We have a lot of issues that got to do with SCADA, which is being used on the network, of the grid network. They have issues that got to do with the same Siemens. But in Nigeria, we believe that we behave as if everybody have got a price. And some of us are saying, no, it's not that I've got the price. We are speaking for Nigeria. So in this Siemens deal, it's a fifth columnist deal between the Bureau of Public Enterprises and Siemens, on the other hand. Not Nigeria. It's an equipment supply deal to bring in emergency power, artificial power, bring in some turbine, put them in, the, uh, turbine, put them in different parts of the country, put emergency gas in them, ramp up load. And when the president leave, it's not sustainable. What we are saying is that from Shiroro to Jeba, from Jeba to Kaduna, from Kaduna to Gumbe, there's what we call reactors on the transmission line. There are different layers of system protective devices that are supposed to be there. They are not there. So mm -hmm. if, if you exceed 5,000 megawatts now of grid, the system will collapse because of obsolescence of infrastructure. So if we want to bring in cement to supply equipment, it must be subjected to global best practices and global competitive index. That is bringing monopoly and edging out others. And at the end of the day, the Nigerian factor, something or one thing or the other must exchange hand. Quote me. So Kale, I'm going to interject so, here to now. ask you this question. Ngozi asked for solutions. If you were to bring something to the table, what would those solutions be? For example, well, the government, let me finish. For yes. example, the government yes. using its 40% to engineer a strategic takeover of the delinquent discos are based on the regulated performance. That would be a solution. What are some other solutions that you could proffer and bring to the table on this? Good, 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 good. Thank you very much. Uh, we need to rejig or overhaul the entire architecture of the, prior, uh, the power sector. We have issue of fiscal indiscipline and governance. Now, the initial agreement is that for five, six, seven years, we are going to have what we call transition, transition as the name implies, electricity market, where you have embeds that will mitigate and what have you. And we, have exit, we are supposed to exit the right now transition electricity market and have what we call syndicated deal between the Jenkos and the Discos and uh, market operator to enforce, knock off any of the Discos that refuse to pay. The Discos are supposed to put on ground what we call like a financial instrument that could be called in the face of non-performance. Talking about the equity, which will address governance structure. We will encourage federal government to pull out its stake which they've not been servicing. Injection of uh, intervention for this is not the same thing as, uh, you know, getting the, uh, their equity stake service. So the discourse equity should be the present owner. Mm -hmm. We're not saying they should send them away because of wrong signal. Should be diluted to 30%. It's the consumer that have been funding the market so that this discourse, as it were, should be properly quoted and registered on the stock exchange as a PLC, public liability company. The remaining 70% now should be thrown open through initial public offering. When there are more stakeholders that will come in with new funds, they will ask questions. It will address the issue of governance. It will address the issue of property and accountability. We cannot continue to go this way. So this present equity structure is faulty, is flawed, and it cannot work. When we take out that, then we can now have real business-minded structure that will not reject load. So, Mr. Olibio, let's take two steps back. 
and, and focus our attention on the people who really are the most important when it comes to the supply chain, and that is the consumer. You said that it is the consumer who's been funding this market uh, up until this point. Uh, one thing that we have seen a lot of is that there's been a lot of pressure on consumers uh, by uh, politicians, by people in the know when it comes to this issue on electricity to make sure that people are aware, the consumers are aware that they would need to pay more for quality service. And I don't think that that has really ever been an issue. Ultimately, people have been paying for service. The issue is the quality of that service has been poor. So then to now shift attention and to uh, put more pressure on consumers to fork over more cash for even worse service, that does need to be addressed. How do you think from the consumer side, people should be reacting to this current situation? Thank you very much. Why I talk about uh, restructuring of the equity is because we, the public can subscribe and we move from what we have these quashocored investors. When you say quashocored investors, they are malnourished. So if you move from quashocored investors to reinvestors, inject more funds, consumers, it is not our business to buy meters for the grocery or filling stations where we buy for it. Our business is to pay. The discourse came in with bogus. Uh, uh, offer that they are going to invest in the technical techni the, the network. They've not done that. Consumers have been buying transformers. The religious organization NGOs have been buying transformers, and what have you? Politicians have been buying transformers. And most times, when we buy some of this equipment, they are twist us, you know, to forcefully make consumers to enter undertaking that is being donated, which most of this agreement in contest are. Uh, fraudulent uh, contract, obtaining, uh, you know, uh, commitment from consumer by false duress. Now, talking about the metering, it's not our business to buy meter. So when we buy meter, Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, times without number, say they will refund us. They are being evasive. That is why we feel that they are either by, by, by standard, uh, standard or, <coughs> you know, sorry to say, they, may, they might have been compromised, which may not be out of place for us to say. So, but most especially the issue of governance. Yoruba say FTL Pala Palakma. We need to address the core issue. The issue of governance. If somebody makes eight billion, the disco the Jenkos, I mean the neck does not even have access to the loop to know mm. the income stream. So we need to change the, the structure and the governance structure will address that. There are issues that got to do with legal, institutional, and regulatory framework. The TCM by now should be unbordered. The okay. NAC itself, the Electric Power Sector Reform Act, should, should, is a sector-wide reform act. We should have what we call the NAC Act 2020. So there are a lot of things we need to do in terms of institutional, legal, and regulatory framework that we cannot mm. address in a short breath. And, and um, a, a discussion like this. Okay. So we are talking to government what we need is sincerity of purpose. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kunle Ulubi, your, for your insights. The discussion over power continues. It's, it's an endless one. Uh, thank you so much.